Welcome to Wisdom Woman Podcast. I believe that is in constant change and growth, not in perfection, that we find happiness. In this podcast, I'm going to be talking with top performance professionals about tools, techniques, new ideas on how to develop your communication skills, use your creative thinking, be a team player, manage your tasks like a pro, be motivated, become an expert on relationships and a problem solver. Everything you need to be five stars in all areas of your life. My intention is to help you develop your skills and find balance between your professional and personal life. My name is Bettina Meyerfluck and I hope I can be your trusted advisor. Welcome to another lightning episode of Wisdom Woman. I'm your host, Bettina Fluke, and today we have a pleasure of diving into an intriguing world of the expat life with the amazing Amanda Molinar. Amanda is a certified coach like me, a true global trotter, having explored the far corners of the world for both work and adventure. But her journey goes beyond mere exploration it's a quest to find her true self and create a home within. As an expert in coaching high achieving expats, Amanda understands the unique challenge they face. She helps those who sometimes find themselves at crossroads seeking for clarity when they had and heard seems to be different in different places. As an expert in coaching high achieving expats, Amanda understands the unique challenge they face. She helps those who sometimes find themselves at crossroads, seeking clarity when the head and the heart seems to be in different places. Whatever you're currently living abroad, have recently returned home, or find yourself constantly on the move, we are going to share our wisdom here to guide you and anchor you. With a diverse clientele encompassing over 20 different nationalities spanning three continents, Amanda has become a beacon of supporting and inspiring individuals from all walks of life. So if you're an expat seeking for a sense of belonging, this podcast is for you. Join us as Amanda Molinar shares her valuable insights and experience illuminating the path to discover inner peace and building a home within, no matter where life's adventure may take you. Welcome to Wisdom Woman, a spat life with Amanda Molinar. Amanda, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for inviting me on your show. And also thank you for the lovely introduction. How do you define this feeling centered uh, that the person feels when they transition from one country to another? How do you yeah. describe this bad feeling? <laughs> yeah, this is a it's, a it's a good question because I think it can be different for everyone. But the feeling that I always get when I think of feeling centered or actually when I'm feeling centered is like this really cozy place inside of me that uh, stores a deep inner trust that no matter what happens, I know I will be okay. This is what feeling at home within means to me and also feeling centered when you're moving country. Because what happens when you move uh, abroad is that, you know, everything changes. Your whole world turns upside down. You need to deal with a lot of things that are coming your way. You need to find your way around town again, uh, learn all the social conventions, deal with paperwork. There's just so much coming your way and everything is new that if you are not careful, it can be very easy to lose yourself. Either you get so overwhelmed with all the change at once that you just like feel scattered all over the place. Or maybe what happens to a lot of people as well is that there's just so much going on that they, they tend to retreat. They tend to isolate or, or become a little bit smaller and they, yeah, um, they are also not very centered. So I think it's super important to have some sort of uh, centeredness within yourself when you're moving abroad because this really helps you to stay true to yourself to make choices that are aligned with you and to really enjoy um, your period abroad from uh, a place within that's centered with that is aligned with who you are 
And you can share some personal experience on how you tap into the deep trust and knowing that you can handle anything regardless on how often and the circumstances changes? Yes. So I feel like I've uh, had this feeling with me for a long time already. When I was 19, I quit my studies to uh, travel in South America by myself, a young blonde woman. I didn't speak a word of Spanish and I stayed there for a year and a half. And, you know, I had quite some challenges along the way. Um, I was I remember being stuck on a, in a roadblock in Bolivia in the middle of the night by myself. And there were all these kinds of things. And I remember feeling already back then, oh my God, if I was able to handle this by myself, you know, the rest will be easier just remembering this. Um, but that feeling was, I have to say, already present before even because I had a bit of an unstable uh, childhood. Uh, I also spent a few years in two foster families. So I always was very good at relying on myself. It was something that, well, I wasn't born with it. But um, I definitely had to practice it in my childhood. So this, uh, rely this feeling of being so centered and this deep trust was already there. However, um, I think I really nailed it when I moved back home from Brazil. I was living there for three years. I moved back home in the pandemic. And then I started a new job at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs where I was working. I had just moved into a new home. And three weeks later, three weeks after my return to the Netherlands, my dad very unexpectedly died. And this was something that shook my world upside down again. And on top of like everything else that was new uh, and changing, this was also something I had to deal with. Um, I remember that winter of uh, 2021, well, it was winter in, in Europe. You know, we had lockdowns. I was grieving my dad. I There was a heartbreak going on. I felt so, so lonely. I couldn't go anywhere. And at the same time, I had started my coaching uh, training. And this was really like a soul digging course. So there was no other option for me than to just go through the pain, including all the pain that I experienced in my childhood um, earlier. And I remember coming out of that period as if I had shed off all this weight and I felt so much lighter. And after that period, I really knew, okay, no matter what happens, I know I will be able to handle anything because I face my deepest fears. I face my deepest emotions. Um, I hit rock bottom and I came up again. So that feeling is just so nice. And now I, I help expats to achieve the same thing without having to go rock bottom, without having to experience a lot of um, challenges, uh, life challenges. So uh, yeah, I help them with getting closer to what they're really feeling inside. Because I think from there, from that place, it's much easier to feel that deep inner trust. Sorry, totally I'm talking for a long you. time. <laughs> When doing a coaching course, we work a lot on ourselves and we as coaches, we need to hire coaches to help us out as well. Yes. So we know how important it is to rely on someone to really open our hearts and to work to achieve a better version of ourselves. So yes. that's that's our path and we love that. That's why we're sharing here today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What are some effective tools and strategy to break this persistent pattern that we may have been uh, following us around our life? So, for example, we have some patterns that uh, we bring even when we are working or moving abroad. Uh, do you have any tips or strategy on how to break those persistent patterns? Yes. So I think it kind of depends on what kind of pattern it is, right? If it's something that is fairly simple, like you uh, signing up for the gym, but uh, always end up not going, you know, I think there are some easier solutions than, for example, if it's something that is super deep within you, if it is rooted in your childhood. Um, let's say if you deal with the fear of commitment or fear of abandonment, that's something that goes a lot deeper than some other patterns. So it depends a bit on that. But um, I would say that the first step for me is always to um, become aware of the pattern in the moment. So what happens is that your brain, you know, they create neural pathways uh, for the brain to save energy. So whenever there's a trigger, your brain already has a saved response to it. And a pattern is something very similar, like you, there's a trigger and you fall into the response again. So I think it's super important if you are experiencing the pattern to 
be in the moment to pause and to really reflect on what you are thinking and what you are doing. Uh, so you can then make a different choice. Um, and what always really helps me is that in that moment, I think, okay, who's the person that I want to become and what would she be doing? So actually yesterday, I felt so tired and my body was really tired. My legs were really heavy. And on Mondays, I usually go to a sort of like CrossFit uh, workout at the gym with a small group. And it has become a non-negotiable. I've been going every Monday, even though I'm not um, the biggest um, gym person, I have to say. And then yesterday uh -huh. I had this urge again of like, oh, but I'm just so tired. Wouldn't it be so nice if, you could if I could just stay on the couch? And then, you know, I became aware of my thoughts. And then I asked myself, but Amanda, who is it that you want to become? And that fit girl that you want to become, she doesn't question her decision to go to the gym. She just goes. It's only 45 minutes and you'll feel better afterwards. So I still went, whereas before, when I wasn't so aware of these things, I would probably just stay on the couch because, you know, treat yourself or whatever. So I think uh, becoming aware, you know, pausing in the moment, becoming aware of your thoughts and then actively choosing different thoughts and different actions really helps. And if it's something deeper that is deeper within you, I would say it takes a longer process um, that is also really necessary to explore your emotions that are around that, which are sometimes covered covered in other patterns or other emotions. But you really want to get to the core of that and to assess, okay, what if, what am I needing to deal with it? I totally agree with you. What I normally say to my clients is important to take a look on the emotional triggers that we face and um, write things down in between your coaching sessions. If you can write down the situations, the emotional, the triggers that bring an emotion to you and describe what happened to you, what emotion you felt, how did you react it? And how would you like to react instead? This is a topic you can bring to your coach and they can help you really do a turnaround for you to perceive your patterns and act differently. Because only after you are aware, you will be able to change th anything in your life. So bringing things to your awareness, it's key for success. Yes. I've included this in my witchy planner. Uh, some tricks and questions you can uh, answer to define your emotional triggers. But I love what you said, Amanda. You're totally right. This pattern of signing up in the gym and not going is very common. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to push ourselves to be there, isn't it? It is sometimes, yeah. <laughs> and in your coaching practice, what have you observed as a common challenge that pets face when, when moving abroad? Well, it's a bit difficult to say because the, so I consider myself not an expat coach, but a life coach for expats, which means that I don't really help expats to, you know, with all the expat stuff, like finding friends and um, paperwork and stuff. Uh, but I'm really a life coach helping expats to dive deeper into their patterns, their emotions, etc. And what I found is that believe it or not, but expats are just like normal people. So they have a wide variety of things they deal with. Um, relationship issues, uh, stress at work, family dynamics. Um, I'm doing all sorts of things, to be honest. But wh what it comes down to, at least with the expats that I coach, which are the like successful, ambitious, high-achieving expats, they have a few traits in common. And um, two, I think... Are hindering their um, growth in a way, especially when they move abroad. And one is that they tend to rely a lot on themselves. They don't ask easily for help. Uh, so they always want to figure it out themselves first, even before getting a coach. That is always their main uh, obstacle in um, be yeah, before they decide to work with a coach. And the second one is they tend to think rather than feel. So they try to solve everything with their head. They're very, very good at analyzing. They're also very often very good at talking about the subject, but they're not so good at feeling it to really be with their emotions. And actually, this is what I've been helping them with uh, to really allow those emotions to come in so it takes off some weight as well. Because no matter where you go, you still bring yourself with you. Um, so I think that is the main if I have to identify one challenge with my expats, it would be that one, I think. So it's not so much about the 
the topic, but more about how they, yeah, go through life. How they approach things. Yes. And how the pets can build resilience to adapt to a new environment and cultures while maintaining their self of sense, the, the sense of self. Yeah, I've, again, I think, like you said, it's very important to be aware of your emotional triggers. So, um, you know, if, if you and I would move to another country, uh, probably, uh, you know, there will be something that would trigger me and that wouldn't trigger you. So it's all within us anyway. So I think it starts really with a good sense of yourself to really know, okay, who am I? What are my needs and what are my triggers? Once you know that, it becomes easier to design your life abroad that matches all your preferences and it doesn't trigger you so much and also if you identify your triggers it's really important i think to work on them to soothe yourself rather to you know deal with it in a more um non-constructive way but also one thing i think that you can find resilience is really by doing things so a lot of us tend to stay in our head um, we overthink we want to do things perfectly but I think you get most resilience from just taking action. So if you are um, feeling somewhat nervous to go uh, to a meetup with a big group because you're a bit of an introvert, but you want to meet friends, like do it anyway and try to stay within yourself. You know, okay, what does it trigger inside of me when I walk up to these people? Um, and what can I be proud of at the end of the day? What have I achieved? So I think it's two-sided. It's one, it's like really knowing yourself, your emotions, your triggers, your needs. And the other part is actually doing something to really build up that resilience. You mentioned something important, going out to really get to know the culture. And I moved myself, uh, uh, my family, two times also from Brazil to United States and from the United States to Australia. And what I think it's very helpful is not staying close in the communities that you are comfortable with. In my case with Brazilians and Americans, I try to really understand how people here live, how Australians live. And this weekend we went for skiing with an Australian family who want to really feel how people do things yeah. here and uh, being close in a community can restrict so much don't you think yes i think it's super important what you mentioned um it's very easy to stay within those groups that you know i know some countries tend to have more of these clique that cliques than others but even so as an expat it's easier to just hang out with expats i, I was guilty of that myself when i lived in brazil i hung out with uh, latin american expats um but I also had a lot of Brazilian friends and that gives you such a deeper understanding of the culture and also makes you feel like you're more rooted within the culture. Um, so you're becoming more of like a, a global local, as I like to say it, rather than just <laughs> a citizen. I love that global local. <laughs> and I'm and how can pets manage the emotional roller coaster that may accompany frequent moves and life adjustments? It, it is a roller coaster. It <laughs> is. It is. Well, first, I think it's really important to realize that it's not you necessarily, right? I mean, expat lives comes with certain faces. Um, I often, yeah, I've identified like seven, no, six or seven. I don't even remember, but I think seven faces that happen in expat life. And it's really good to know, like, okay, this is just part of the roller coaster. I, I'm just on a train. This is not necessarily happening because of me or something, you know? So it's really important to know this comes with expat life. To have a little bit of more self-compassion with yourself also in that way. And again, like, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to repeat myself in this podcast, but I really want to say, like, it starts with you. So if you are experiencing all the emotions, are you able to sit with your emotions and to really, you know, so many of us distract ourselves unconsciously. We take our phones to scroll through Instagram or TikTok. I'm definitely guilty of that myself. We eat, we drink, we, um, we talk, we shop to avoid feeling uncomfortable feelings and this just happens like we don't do this on purpose on purpose but it happens and so if you are experiencing so much overwhelm and the roller coaster of expert life can you also be with your emotions rather than pushing them away because i've learned in my own journey that the moment you can really be with your emotions sit with them allow them in they tend to leave much quicker afterwards 
if you keep pushing them away, they will, they want to be felt at some point. So they're going to keep bothering you. So my advice would also really be to just be with your emotions and really feel them. Where in your body do you feel them right now? What are they here to tell you? What are you needing to deal with those emotions? I think that this is really key. And be aware about the changes in your body. If you're a female, you know how the period impacts you. So sometimes you might be feeling sad and you think it's because you just moved to a new country because you don't have friends or your job is not like the way you want it. But pay attention if it's this feeling is not related to your hormones at the moment. If it is, wait one or two weeks and you're going to feel excited again. But pay attention. Don't try to find excuses for your feelings. Just pay attention on your feelings and pay attention on your body, on how life is going for you. Yes. Be aware. Addition. Yes. Yeah. Really good addition. And yeah, don't, uh, don't find a story around it. Just be with it. And mindfulness is something super important. How do you approach mindfulness in your coaching practice? Yeah, so I um, I often recommend my coaches to start meditating to make that uh, connection more with like their inner self. Um, I sometimes meditate myself as well. I need to do it more often. Um, but what I do, how I apply mindfulness really in my coaching is to really uh, guide my coaches to their emotions. So their head is super strongly present. Like if we just go, if we just end up talking, they're not going to go any deeper, not, not much. So what I really do is I guide them into a state that they feel, um, yeah, more vulnerable, more closer to their true self, uh, where do you, these emotions come up and I guide them. Okay. Where do you feel it? How does it feel? Does it have a color? Mm -hmm. you know, what is it here to say? Can we make it bigger? Can we exaggerate it a little more to see, you know, what kind of move you want to make if that emotion is so big? Because that tells us also a lot how you deal with life then. Um, can we breathe into it? Can we then let it go again? So these are some of the things I do in my coaching practice. Practice. I don't think it's the classical mindfulness, but this is how I apply it because I think to me mindfulness is also really about um, getting that connection with your body again. I agree. And you mentioned something super important, meditation. If you are listening to our podcast and have difficulty meditating, just send me a message here on um, podcast at wisdomwoman, uh, richie.tech, and I will send you 21 meditations called Opening to Abundance. Is a group of meditations that initiate you on the practice it's only 15 minutes a day, and I encourage you to do an exercise together with the meditation. It's very nice. Or if you want to check out, I have also a channel at Insight Timer with several meditations. But mindfulness, it's an important step whenever yeah. you're looking to be the best version of yourself. Yes. And, and another, like can you share some successful stories of your clients and how you transform their lives? <laughs> Bringing yeah. stability to certainty and helping them with feeling secure. Yeah, so um, I've had a, quite a few coaches. So as I said, like I, I help them with a variety of things, but a few ones stand out for me. And one was um, a European diplomat uh, living abroad, and she contacted me because she needed to make a choice about her career. Am I going to continue abroad? Am I going back home? Because career-wise, it would be good to stay abroad, but I have this um, desire to, to settle down at some point, even though at the time she didn't have a relationship. And she um, booked the coaching package with me, which was six sessions. But after our first session, she already had the answer to her question, which I think was amazing. Like she had her breakthrough in the first session and she felt so strong about her choice. Like she knew at, after, right after the first ses session, okay, this is it. Like there were no more doubts. She just felt this, such a strong feeling from like, from inside wow. telling her that this is the <laughs> right feeling, the right choice. So that was really nice. Um, one that also stood out for me was a um, British expat who, um, I saw her a post of her on Facebook and she said like, I'm so afraid of driving. I have my driver license. 
but I'm just too afraid and I need something more than just like talking about it. So I said, you know, I think I can help you. And I really, as a coach, I, I really personalized the sessions to the needs of my clients. And with her, we did several exercises coming from coaching. Um, but also we did a breathwork session because I'm uh, also officially a breathwork facilitator. And we also really looked at, okay, what parts within you exist? And it turned out that she had like an angry teenager within her and a really fearful kid. And whenever there was a certain trigger, those two would, would alternate within her. And there was not the grown up adult version of herself who was really taking action. And the moment she could see that and understand that, she could also apply that in her daily life. So she, at work, she often felt like, oh, no, that's my teenager coming out again. Now I need to know what to do. Or that is wow. the fearful, a fearful young girl. OK, she needs to be suited. So what can I give her? And then as our final session, um, I did a session in my car. And I drove to a parking lot and I guided her in sort of visualization and really um, channeled her energy towards like something empowering and uh, visualizing her future goal. And then wow. she drove around and she just felt ecstatic afterwards. So that was really, really cool. I really enjoyed coaching her. Oh my, that's so cool. I love yeah. the stories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you have um, some practical techniques to help as pets with the homesickness and how they can deal with missing a family? Yeah. So I have to admit, I almost never felt homesick because I just like being away. <laughs> But there was one time uh, I was in Brazil. It was Christmas. My boyfriend at the time was in the Netherlands. My family was there and I was, I had some rare parasites. So I was on antibiotics. I couldn't even have a glass of alcohol. And uh, I just remember feeling so lonely. And I think what is really important when you're feeling homesick is to identify what is it that makes you feel this way? So is it because you miss your family? Is it because you miss your culture? or you just need a hug or you miss you know some comfort what or the you the fact that you can just walk out and meet your good friends uh, because you feel lonely in the host country like what is it that makes you feel homesick and once you've identified that how can you put that in your life today already so if you are in need of a hug can you call someone here if you um I don't know, if you miss something particular from your home, can you find a creative way to have that in your host country as well? I think this is really important. Like we sometimes overlook uh, what small things can do. So in my case, I'm someone who needs a lot of adventure and variety in her life. And uh, in Brazil, I definitely had that. I was flying across the country every couple of weeks. And here in the Netherlands, I find myself very stuck in The Hague, where I live. Um, I mean, I was, now I've got my rhythm. But when I identified, like, okay, I'm, I'm craving adventure, I'm craving freedom, um, what I did, I started working at different locations. So sometimes I would take myself to a coffee place or to a beach bar to just work from there or to Amsterdam, you know, to not be in The Hague. And so it is not the big... Uh, adventure that I had in Brazil, but it's like a micro adventure that I'm putting in my daily life. And always, if we're craving something, we're after a feeling. So if you identify that feeling, how can you translate that into something tangible in the here and now? This will help you to feel better and to not be like, oh, it's there and I cannot have it. No, I can actually put it in my life here as it is also. Wow, I love that idea. I work uh, two days in a co-working space, one day in a coffee, and always have um, lunch with friends just to bring this variety to my life, too. It's yes. so important. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And what strategies would you recommend uh, to maintain this sense of balance and calm when facing this? You said you mapped all the phases of an adaptation for an expat, but to bring balance to all those ups and downs, what would you recommend? 
Yeah, well, I think um, daily meditation is a good one. So uh, definitely get your uh, me meditation uh, series that you just mentioned. I think this is super important. This is something, I, you know, I was flying so much in Brazil. My life, it was, I was all over the place all the time. And uh, I had a really strong daily practice of meditating right after getting out of bed. I would meditate for just 10 minutes. And the first two weeks were awful. You know, I thought like, what am I doing here? But then afterwards, I really felt like, oh, that really feels like me time. Like no one is, it can enter here. It's just really for me. And it just felt like this cozy place that I spoke about before inside of me. Um, so I think this can really help you to um, deal with all those, you know, volatile days and, and phases in your expat life. And again, I think it's also really important to have some self-compassion to know like, okay, this is just part of it. I don't need to make a super big drama out of it. It just happens. I need to be kind to myself. And another important element I think is to ask for help. Um, well, and again, my coaches and also how I was, I didn't ask for help very easily. I really had to learn this. Um, but people actually love to help. So if you can, if you need help, like even if it's just a phone call with people back home or a new friend that is taking you out for lunch, you know, just to get your mind off things, um, just state your needs and ask them if they can help you. I think this is also really important. I love your ideas. <laughs> My last question to you is about the sense of belonging. I think this is something everybody would when we're living abroad. And I can share my tips, what I did here recently to have the sense of belonging. But what would you recommend people do to that are uh, aiming to find a sense of belonging? Yeah, I think one of the things you already mentioned is to, uh, you know, engage in a local culture. I think this is really important. Um, I kind of struggled and still struggle with it myself when I think of countries because I don't feel super at home in the Netherlands anymore after having lived abroad for so long. Uh, but I also never felt like a true local in those countries. So you're somewhat in between. And I really, uh, I'm starting to settle with, okay, I'm just a very global citizen and um, I'm happy wherever I go because I've got that inner home within myself. Um, and that inner home, again, you create by just really being with your emotions, with your needs, with your secret dreams that you have. Uh, I think the moment you can really accept yourself, everything that you are, life becomes a lot lighter and you will have this home within yourself. Um, and maybe some more practical tips besides engaging in the local culture is also to really make a home of your home. So. I, when I moved back to the Netherlands and my dad died, you know, I didn't even have curtains in my new house. I was just living there for a week. And that place was, was my new house, but it didn't feel like my home at all. So mm -hmm. um, this was a hard lesson I eventually learned, but I realized, okay, I really need to turn it into a home. There was a lot of negative energy in that house because there was a lot of resistance from my side. I didn't want to be there. And it took me a full year to really be like, okay, but this is my home, so I need to invest in it. So if I know a lot of people, they think, oh, but I'm only going to live here for a year. So it doesn't make sense to invest in it, to renovate the place. But do it anyway, because this is your home and you spend a lot of time in it. So you know you want to feel good inside of it. So what can you do to create that cozy, safe place that you really need when you live abroad? Uh, this can be small, tangible changes in the house, but it can also be something more energetic that you, I don't know, see your house in a different way. Maybe you set up a little meditation corner for yourself or something else. Great ideas. I <laughs> love that, Amanda. <laughs> for me, uh, what I did uh, to really have the sense of belonging was to try to find my tribes. So I'm very aware of the hobbies that I have, what I like to do in life. So I try to find those tribes here instead of convincing the friend that I made to like what I like. Mm. I try to make friends in the environment uh, of the things that I like. For example, I love exercising. So I normally exercise it at home in the United States. I had in my basing, basement a gym. 
But when I moved here to Australia, I said, no, I like to exercise. I want to meet people that like the same thing than you. So I enrolled myself in a gym. I like also to bike, so I enroll myself in a group that bikes, that hikes, the scouting program, everything that I loved, I tried to find those tribes and I created a plan for the six, the first six months to engage with those um, groups and make friends. And when was my birthday, I really put a lot of effort selecting the best people I interacted with in the past six months to invite and celebrate my birthday. So my birthday was very important. I did something very <laughs> unique. I invited those friends for a Zumba class because as Latins, oh. we love dancing. Yes. So we started the day at 6 a.m. with a Zumba class. And then uh, at you know, 7 a.m., at 8 a.m., we jump in the sea in the cold water. That's something I do with my friends here once a week. And then we had a little tea after the, the jump in the sea. This is something really nice, the cold and hot. We took a hot shower, sauna, and then we went for a green juice together. And wow. I know that the people I invited, they are my tribe. They like the same things that I do. And it was hard cultivating, you know, this friendship the first six mm -hmm. months. But I felt really accomplished. I did. I found people that like the same thing that I do. Yeah. So I really encourage you to, if you like photographing, for example, try to find a group of people who love phot photographing as well. And if you like dogs, uh, join a group of trained dogs uh, and, yeah. and just be with the people that like the same thing that you. That makes a huge difference. It does. This is such a good tip, actually. And often... Um you say like, oh, try to find a group, but sometimes you can't find a group, create one yourself. You know, there are more people like you, trust that they are there, just show up um, as the leader of that group and people will come around and, and join you in that group. There are more people that like the same interests than you think. Yeah, and that's how I found a man that's so curious that she lived in Brazil. I find yeah. her online. She's doing an amazing work on LinkedIn. Um, contacting people and offering her support. And let me try to explain, if you can help me, Amanda, the difference between the coaching that you do and what I do is Amanda really helps the not only the executives, but the high achiever professionals who are living abroad. And like she explained, finding work-life balance, taking decisions. And I help families who are moving abroad for example if an executive is moving abroad and the spouse needs to find what they're going to do what they love how they can bring their knowledge to a new country sometimes they don't speak the fluent language of this new country how to find your confidence how to adapt your kids how to talk with your kids how to define your own personality and find people that you like to enjoy and spend time with so I mainly help people in career transition and small entrepreneurs who are abroad and trying to thrive and have a lack of confidence. They are not sure if they can do it. And as a household, I know how hard it is to manage a house with kids. So talking with your kids and being sure that your kids are happy and settled, that's a big thing too. And I'm not sure if I explained right what you did, but if you want to... Just yeah, and I, I think you explained it pretty well. Yeah, and it was maybe something that I would like to add is that I help these ambitious expats who've got their career in order, but their personal life just feels a bit wobbly. So I help them really to feel as steady in their personal life as they feel in their career. I think this is uh, in the one phrase what I do with them. That's awesome. So people, if you want to get in touch with Amanda, I will put here on the description of this podcast her LinkedIn, the website, and email. You can contact her. And if you wanted the 21 day of meditation, just shoot me an email at podcast at witchy.tech. And I will put my information on the description of the podcast as well. Thank you so much, Amanda, for being here with us today. Thank you, Bettina. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in into this enlightening episode of Wisdom Woman, the podcast featuring Amanda Molinar. 
If you're eager to explore further into the world of expatriates, don't hesitate to contact us both. And to learn more about our services, you can go to the description of this podcast. We also invite you to stay connected with the Wisdom Women podcast in all the channels that uh, we have here in Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and stay in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Wisdom Woman Podcast. To hear past and future episodes, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast channel. We appreciate your reviews. To give us suggestions for future show topics, please write to us at podcast at witty.tech. If you're interested in having me as your trust advisor, schedule a strategic coaching session on my website, www.witty.tech. 